Hello and welcome back to another Dark Tide guide here on Broadside Gaming with me, Zug. So today we're looking at the Sharpshooter Veteran and it's taken me a while to cobble this one together because just so many different guns and the different marks of them and it's just I've been testing through all of them and uh, this is what I've ended up with. So we'll have a look. For your melee, I've gone with the power sword, as it is literally the most powerful melee weapon you can get your hands on at the moment for the veteran, especially with the active ability, which is powering the thing on. You can hack through most stuff quite easily. Heavy armor, black armor, carapace armor, you know, so on and so forth. Uh, it's at this point in time, it is the best pick. Uh, don't pay too much attention to the perks and blessings. Of course, they are not optimal because we're relying on random drop chance at this point. It's literally find one with a perk you like and then upgrade it and hope to Christ that it upgrades to what you want, which it never will. So moving on to your ranged weapon, and this is what's taken me the longest. So I've landed on two different guns. So this one... The Cantrell MGXII Inventory Last Gun. This thing will more or less one shot, headshot, most trash, most Ill most special and semi elites, and will do a great deal of damage to the harder elites. And it will bring you something like 300 shots if you uh, add in the the whole it takes 3 ammo for one shot out of the last gun so 300 shots without picking up ammo and you know for the veteran ammo is your biggest you know need because there's always going to be some dick that's snaffling it all while you're shooting stuff most likely a preacher uh, but yeah so it's for this one or the Control MG IV, which is slightly faster firing, has slightly more ammo, but you will take more shots to kill things. So I generally run with this one, because it's high damage, high capacity, and it's the 20% damage to Manix and Ghost on it that I is the main reason I'm keeping it around, because they're very, very, very good. I have tried all of the, you know, auto fire torrent guns, rapid fire. I just don't like them. Like they're fun to fire, but you end up wasting most of your ammo just to put down something that this or this would take one or two shots to kill. Like uh, this infantry auto gun is one of the most fun guns I've ever played with. It's hilarious. On lower difficulties, it is really fun to run around with and just spam into things. But as you get higher and higher, it's kind of not super great only having 30 shots in the clip and having such a minuscule amount of backup ammo as well. So generally, I stick for these two last guns. They tend to just work better on the higher difficulties I have been trying to make a hobo with a shotgun build but it's incredibly painful it's so painful playing with a shotgun as a as a veteran sniper I mean I've, I've really tried uh, I have played with the bolt gun I'm not a huge fan of it I think it works better on the preacher but that's just my opinion if you get more mileage out of it then you know go for it so uh, the curios, obviously, these aren't optimized. It's literally just random shit that I've picked up. What I would want is toughness on them with toughness regeneration on all of them. And it's like plus 4% experience. I'm like, why do I need that at this level? It's not like leveling up gives you anything like it did in Vermintide. You don't get a pity chest. 
and like ten percent chance of curios as mission rewards instead of weapons. It's like, why would I want that? But yeah, they're no. It's just, I'm using them generally just for the the rating and the blessing. Most of the perks are absolute trash on these, but you know, it's, you use what you got. So for the actual uh, feats, I'm using. Confirmed kill, replenish 20% toughness on elite kill and a further 20% toughness over time. It just generally seems to work best for me. I mean, if you really wanted to, out of all of this, you could pretty much go with whatever you want and it will work. But this is just what I find works for me. Uh, demolition stockpile. This is one I didn't initially start with until I started playing Heresy and Damnation and realized how good grenades are for the veteran. You get surrounded by trash, you just drop one at your feet, and it clears a huge space for you. And being outside of the need to pick up grenades from everyone else, you're not fighting for them. It, it's They're really good to have. And even if you don't use them offensively, like clearing out big packs before they get you, but using them defensively to clear yourself space or clear mobs off of an objective objective i think this is almost an auto pick here uh bioptic targeting volley fire designates non-ogrin elites and specials as priority targets for all allies in coherency i generally find which one is the best like these two just aren't that great and this basically picks up everything and this entire build is more about making yourself um, more independent of the group. Because unless you're playing with friends, it, it's just an absolute clusterfuck. And it's a free-for-all. So this will help you pick out what's coming. And also if you hear like a burster or another special through a wall, you can't tell where it's coming from. You're caught on your own. You can pop this and figure out where the hell that thing's coming from. Next, we're going with Unwavering Focus. 75% toughness damage reduction from ranged attacks during volley fire. And this pairs up nicely with Counter Fire. So 25% weak spot damage during volley fire. Volley fire now designates all shooters as priority targets. Killing a designated enemy during volley fire refreshes its duration. So during high engagements, you can have this 75% damage uh, toughness damage reduction up quite a lot because you will just be popping the heads of all the ranged but you know as soon as the range run out you'll probably end up switching over to the power sword and grenades anyway and so for level 25 i'm using dead shot still and i can't tell whether it's good or not this is the one sticking point so far so you know in the comment section if if you guys know whether it's good or bad you know feel free to let me know i'm still trying it because on paper it seems good but i can't tell if it is actually performing that well and i mean fragstorm things aren't really alive long enough for the bleed to matter and reload speed on the elite kill i mean i'm an ocd reloader anyway so after every single engagement i'm reloading while i'm on the move and with the last gun um or las gun uh you have such a huge clip that you're not really scrabbling for time to reload. So I generally go with dead shot. But it might be the wrong choice for this one. I'm I'm still umming and ahhing about it. But yeah, I mean it it works pretty well. I mean, especially with the so we've got manics here. This is on uh, Heresy. I mean, damage is pretty decent. My aim obviously isn't super amazing, but I mean, as you can see, it does do quite a bit. And obviously the Power Sword. Just, it will eat through most stuff. Rage, 
And until they make something, until they nerf it or they buff something else, I think the power sword is the auto pick or what weapon you want to go with. But you can tell the difference. So you get about 60 damage on a headshot. Power it up. 454 on a crit. Yeah. Mostly I bring it out for this sort of thing. Obviously not powered up, it's not going to do much, but I mean, if you're stuck on your own, I get it. And these things actually do quite a bit of damage. During volley fire. Also, I still can't find the fucking weak spot on these things. It seems to be like the breastbone or just under the neck or just between the shoulder blades. It's got a really a really weird weak spot there. But everything else I find it just works quite well. And you can really feel the 20% damage increase to Manix. I do find, as the uh, veteran sharpshooter, these little pricks are the main thing that's going to be getting you, is being counter-sniped. But yeah, this is what I've been running. I hope it helps, you know, this is just what I've been doing. But yeah, it's, it's taken a lot of just trying to figure out where the hell this build's going and what they're doing and as I said before in the zealot video the game is very very new all of this is subject to change and when they do change anything I'll put up another build video and hopefully it will contain the newest information but for now this is what we've got to work with there's no crafting so all we can do is upgrade bits we find and hope it works out so until next time, folks, I hope this has helped. And if you've enjoyed, please like, subscribe, hit the little bell for notification. It really does help us out. And I'll see you all for the next guide. So until then, see you later.